for me. Like, I, 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 I think I can do better, and I think that, you know, the people, I want to be around people who are pushing themselves in that way. Okay, now you just mentioned, uh, you know, AAA 70 rated games. Like, what is the difference between the ratings in these games? Because I, you know, I, I've seen the terminology before, but I've never really been able to think about a clear definition other than just... I know it when I see it. Sort of. uh, yeah, I think ratings are broken. I know I use the term, but ratings are kind of broken anyways. It's, it's kind of hard. In general, what I would say is a 70, like, like Wolfenstein that I worked on a couple of years ago, that was a 74, I think, or 75 when we finished. And, and, and I would, what I'd say is it was like there was a really fun game in there, and it was a lot of fun for a lot of time, but the pacing was kind of off. The story was bad. Uh, and it, w it wasn't as polished as it could be. I think it's all about polish. Um, the thing about Bioware games are they're very polished for the most part. Like, and the time we take between like alpha and beta is like way more than most companies take. And I think that's where a lot of the polish comes. Because if you played, if you played Mass Effect Three in say October, you might be worried that we're not going to finish or like what the hell is going on? Like it's crazy. But then like October, November, December come. And you play it again at the end of December when we're effectively done. And you're like, holy crap, this is like a hugely different game. And it's all that little polish. It's all that everything is coming together at once. The cinematics are finally done. The sound got put on top of it. The effects are there. The post-processing is there. The little design tweaks are there. The VO is in instead of it being robo-voice talking like this, Shepard. Like, all that stuff matters so much. Um, and so, yeah, I really think the difference between those games is that polish and that and the execution of, of, of what the core mechanics of that game are. And Bioware has just a very clear lineage of RPG. Uh, like how, how much does that kind of like pressure you and other designers working on a new RPG to kind of live up to that past of like Baldur's Gate, Knights of the Old Republic, Mass Effect 1, Dragon Age Origins? Uh, it, it's a it's a huge pressure, but I, I for me at least, I can only speak for myself, it's the kind of pressure that I like. It's the pressure that makes me perform better like i work well like at chaos <laughs> like at the edge of chaos basically um and so that pressure means that we hold ourselves to a higher standard um but what it also means is that we're not beholden to just creating what other people have held so there are some people uh, including fans who go like mass effect 3 isn't an rpg at all because it doesn't fit their traditional definition of a D and D RPG like the old Baldur's Gates and Nightingales, Fallout, things like that. And but what we're looking for at Bioware is always to be expanding and pushing what game design is and the design of what games are, right? And so I think we did something interesting by kind of blending the action the third person cover action genre with the RPG and deep story and narrative genre. And like that's something that people haven't done as much. Um and whether or not you want to debate, is that an RPG? You know, like, I certainly think it's an RPG. I think it's a very different style of RPG. In the same way that Diablo did years ago. Like, when Diablo came out, people were, were like, is Diablo an RPG? Because the stats kind of auto-upgrade for you. You just click a lot. And it's like, well, it's an action RPG. It's a different kind of action RPG than Mass Effect. So the past matters because we want quality. And we want to be known for being leaders in the industry and creating the best like narrative-driven games. But it also means that we're not going to just create things because they worked in the past. In fact, we're going to take risks and try things to push the genre in the future to keep being that leading edge company. Because if you stand still, all the other companies are going to catch up and all the other games will be doing what we're doing. And then we have no competitive edge. Like, we want to be on the next thing. So whatever the next you know thing we work on is, I'm sure it's going to be different than what the products we've been working on currently are in some way. Okay, and uh, just completely unrelated. Um, you mentioned before that you had worked on uh, the like 2009 Wolfenstein game. Did you also happen to have any hand in the uh, Enemy Territory open source uh, game that came out? Oh, God, I, I wish. Uh, I, was, I was in high school when that came out, or I think maybe early college. It was like 1999-2000. And I played Enemy Territory. That is actually the last multiplayer game, like competitive multiplayer game. That I like, got super into. I, I played that probably like hundreds of hours over the uh, uh, over my summer break. I actually remember having dreams about like capturing points or being this like the, the covert op in uh, enemy territory. So while I wish I could say I had anything to do with that, no, 
Uh, I had nothing to do with enemy territory. It's a wonderful game um, that was made by, I believe Splash Damage made it, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it was an absolutely wonderful kind of like free mod that came, or not even mod, but like free expansion that came out. Yeah, I, I remember just uh, getting completely into that game when I was in high school, so I just wanted to make sure. Um, but yeah, I've been asking a lot of questions. I, I want to uh, open it up to the uh, live chat I have set up to, you know, if you guys have any questions uh, you want to ask, please type them, you know, and uh, you know, we'll see what we can get answered. Um, you know, in the meantime, is there anything uh, you would like to ask us, uh, Mandy? You know, I'm always curious. What you know? What are you? What are your favorite parts of the franchise? I guess like w w what matters the most to you? Is it the characters that you pick up? Is it the combat? Is it the like the moral decisions, the ethical dilemmas that occur? Uh, for me, it's uh, such a grand combination of them all. I am a huge fan of any narrative-driven game. Uh, just you know, as someone who writes and reads all the time. You know, that, that's perhaps one of the most important things to me. And, you know, especially in Mass Effect 2, when we had to debate, uh, you know, what do we do with uh, the Geth, uh, the Geth fanatics? Do we convert them or do we destroy them? And it's that sort of moral decision that if you're reading a book, uh, reading a paper, um, you know, you uh, can sit there and think hypothetically about it. Like, oh, I would totally do this. But... In a video game, in an interactive medium, it's not hypothetical anymore. The game stops then. You have to make a decision, and that's really when you're forced to actually confront what you actually do. And I, I think that's, you know, one of the most important things to me for this franchise is making us confront our inner demons and ask ourselves the tough questions that we can't necessarily get the answers to in any other way. Cool. Yeah, no, that's actually a lot of the same things why I like the game. The ethical dilemma is that kind of narrative, but there's a really good mechanical base, base behind it uh, that lets me kind of push forward. Yeah. Um, uh, someone wants to know, what was the process like in creating the Prothean squad mate from a designer's point of view? Yeah, so I, I worked on the power um, for him. Um, the power is called Dark Channel. Um, and so myself and a few of the other designers in Edmonton kind of started throwing out ideas for new powers as we usually do when we have to like brainstorm a new power. Um, and, and we started thinking about like, well, what would be interesting and what fits the kind of character that the Prothean is? And so we decided to go with this power uh, that's, you, you cast it and it puts a damage over time, a dot on the enemy to cast and it, it pretty, chooses through them really fast. And it lasts, like 30 seconds, which is really long. Like warp does the damage over time, but does not last like more than four to six seconds, depending on what upgrades you have, I think. Um, and so what we did with that is, because it's, like no one's ever going to be alive for 30 seconds if this thing is on them, we made it this kind of crowd control damage over time power that when you cast it on somebody and it killed them, it would jump to somebody else close by if they were within range. So it almost comes like this virus power. It's like It's like the plague, you know? Like, you, you, you catch it. And so it kind of becomes like, hey, you can control this whole area of, of enemies. And we thought that was an interesting way for the Prothean to kind of work. Uh, it kind of fit who his character was narratively, which I'll let you guys discover more uh, in, in when you actually play the DLC, if you play the DLC. Someone's asking, is uh, Javik, a, who's the Prothean name, a, a biotic? Yeah, he's definitely a biotic. Um, or he has some biotic tendencies, I should say. Uh, and so, like, that was the design for me. Like, now, the character design, I can't really speak for those, you know, the, the character artists did a great job of, you know, making that, that creature come to life, um, you know, as well as the voice actor did an interesting job with, like, and, and the post-process that we have kind of going on him um, to kind of make him an interesting character. Like, I don't really know what went into all that because it kind of just happened and there was a character one day and I was like, Make a power for him. Actually, I didn't have to make the power when he was around. Like, I just knew I had to make a power. I could, I could put it on Liara, right? And just for testing purposes, I can put it on Shepard just for testing purpose. Um, for the person on the voice chat, I don't know who the voice actor is. Uh, anyways, so yeah, the, the, the process was, the, the process was fun. It was, it was a lot of brainstorming. I'll, I'll be honest. Like, we, I was, 
we had just finished kind of like our main stuff. We were kind of, you know, at the point where you're just seeing bugs when we started working on that. Because there's usually about a three month gap between when you finish the game and the game comes out. Like we were done at the end of December. Then January was just like last minute bug fixes to, you know, go into certification with Microsoft. And so we're working on all this stuff in that time period. And you're kind of tired. <laughs> Frankly, very, very, very exhausted and bleary eyed. And it's kind of like you're just trying to finish. So luckily we had a good idea from an early stage and it kind of worked the first time, which doesn't always happen. So we got kind of lucky. I can imagine. Now, what was it like when they kind of came to you? Like, hey, there's this uh, character who belongs to a race that is supposed to not exist anymore. Like, make something out of this. Like, what was that like for you guys? Where, you know, it, it was something that, that at least most of us didn't know, like, there could be this sort of character. Right. Well, it, it, in a way, it's, it's liberating, actually, because while we have stories of the Protheans, we don't really know what they were like, right? So we have an, a chance to kind of make things without preconceived notions of what they should or shouldn't do. And that lets you explore things. But the funny thing about game design is that having the freedom, like no, having like little restrictions is actually the worst thing in the world because then your mind just goes everywhere and everything's a possibility. And if you have like constraints, like, well, no, I can't do that. So I'm just going to focus on the things I can do. And you come up with something a little more interesting faster. Um, so for us, with with the Prothean, like it was liberating in terms of we could we could kind of craft him to work the way we want wanted him to work, um, but we didn't have to be beholden to something that everyone knows. Like that's not the way he would be because nobody really knows. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay, and uh, someone a little bit further up in chat had an answer question. Um, oh. I, I'm, I can imagine you aren't even allowed to talk about this, uh, but are there any plans for Mass Effect 4, and what about the rumors of the movie? Definitely can't talk about any future of the franchise uh, beyond... We are doing DLC. I can't say what or how many DLCs beyond the Protein one that's announced for day one, but there will be more DLC, just like what you saw with Mass Effect 2. So we want to support the product uh, over time. Um, the movie, uh, it's been announced, we're doing it with Legendary Pictures. Uh, Casey Hudson, our executive producer and project director for all the games, is an executive producer on the film. Uh, you know, as a fan, even as a developer, the fan, I just hope it's, you know, a good movie. That it's, uh, video, let's face it, video game movies don't have a great history. So I'm hoping that having our own guys involved and the fact that we had a really good narrative for Mass Effect 1, uh, I think it's helpful. So I believe the movie is supposed to be uh, taking place around Mass Effect 1. Um, and the story was already really good, so like turning it into a Hollywood film shouldn't be too difficult. Let's see what happens, obviously. I don't know anything about release dates. Like, If I did, I couldn't tell you, but I actually don't even know. So. Okay, and someone else wants to know, um, what was it like, uh, you know, it, uh, what did plan on doing with Edie as a squad mate? I don't know how to translate that properly. Uh, uh, that 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 sounds like I can't answer that without spo doing lots of spoilers, so I'm not going to answer that question. Okay. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm trying to keep spoiler. I I, I don't want to ruin the game for anybody. You know, I I don't want to confirm things that we haven't publicly confirmed. I don't want to. I, I want everyone to have an awesome experience on March 6th, or if you're in Europe, March 9th. Um, and, and really, hopefully, enjoy the game. Like all the buzz I've been hearing from people who kind of have been playing the game already because they got review copies or whatever is good, so hopefully all the fans will enjoy it as well. Uh, I, I can definitely say I'm absolutely looking forward to uh, you know, playing the game. Uh, so, uh, let's see, any other questions? I mean, do you, is there anything you can comment on about the PS3 framework? You know if there's going to be like day one patch to fix that at all, or... You know, I know some people have complained about some of the frame rate issues uh, on the PS3 and the demo. There was a lot of op the demo was not final code. There was a lot of optimizations that happened uh, after that demo was built to try to make things better in the, on the PS3 version. So I'm pretty certain they are better in the final version. However, I'm I know there are still choppy points on the PS3. There's choppy points occasionally on 360 as well. To be completely honest, it. it it just happens, unfortunately, sometimes. Um, so, so really, the PS3 is definitely better in the final version. Um, if it's it, better enough for what I was expecting, I, I can't really 
say because I, I don't know that person. Uh, but I, I, I guys, as 